Hello, how are we today, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfden Podcast. I hope you are well. I am well. Will is Will. How are you? Yes, I am. Don't you ever forget it. I never will. I promise. All right. Guys, thank you to Alicia B-Side for the seven months. Knuckles and Sonic 2. Yeah, you're going ahead of the show. Way ahead of everybody else. Relax. Kikoba, thank you for the 21 months. If you were to buy one gaming console, which air fryer would it be? Fuck you, Kikoba. Ah, I said it out for it at the beginning of the stream. You, you, I hate that you did that to me. Kikoba's banned. Um, he got you. He got me. You guys, you guys are starting off with trolls. Uh, my microphone's broken. Uh, so if I cut out, uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, Bob is very low. Can barely hear him. Hello. Here, I can raise myself on this. Boop. He sound, sound fine to me. Can but barely like hear him. Pain. I think that's conjecture. <laughs> I can see my levels. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, guys, there's not much going on in it's gaming. A, it was right another now. another bad week for gaming news. Uh, so much so that some of the stuff we didn't talk about last week carried over to this week. But in terms of news, but you guys loved so much our console tier list. You guys said, "Wolf boys." You did such a good job making a console tier list. You guys should do the handhelds. That's what you guys said. All of you said it's this. Word you guys, for word verbatim. You guys must be the authority on what consoles are best because you did so good. So this week, today even, we're making a tier list of the handheld consoles, the ones that we left out on last week. Yes. Uh, yo, Yonitz. Thanks for the two months. I love you, Daddy Bob. You're my, I'm not the one. You're my favorite YouTuber and my weekly therapy. No joke. Never forget me. I, I, that was, you laid it on thick. And I don't like it. Well, that's how you won't forget him. Also, go to therapy. But thank you. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got the consoles. We got everything here. I just found this tier yes. list. Uh, does it have all the handhelds? No, I only. Um, I don't see a Game Boy Color. Ooh, mm. I see a regular well, Game Boy. The Game Boy Color is. Well, let's see. So, so when I when I talk about the Game Boy, I include the Game Boy Color with the game boy because the regular game boy not that many good games right the thing about because the game boy color is is basically the ps4 pro uh to the game boys ps4 it, it's more of an incremental upgrade than anything else i think the only reason why people treat it as a different system is because it's it was in full color Mm -hmm. but otherwise well, it, it took, wasn't that much different it, than it a took, regular game boy it took different games you know, the games are proprietary True. True. that that makes it a different system don't worry will True. i found a different <laughs> tier list okay I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the in the keep uh okay. looks like it has significantly less is there a 2ds okay well we're getting really in there with this one <laughs> Uh, Late Snake, thanks for the 250 bits. Sega missed Saturn and just went straight to Sega Uranus. What is wrong with you people today? Today you guys are on something. <laughs> Uranus. Uh, how do we do this? Do we do it in order of release? Uh, well, yeah, because that's how we did it last time. So what do we got? What is this one? Blockbuster something. What are you what are you looking at? In between uh, the Game Boy and the Virtual Boy? Yes. I've seen that before. I know what it is. I can't tell you what the name of it is. Okay, maybe the chat can help us out. Uh I'd imagine that that's the first one. Well, actually, no, the Game Boy Watch is the first one. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, the Game Boy Watch came out in like the friggin' what? Eighties? Yeah, like the early eighties. 
1980. I almost said the 70s, and I was like, no, it couldn't be the 70s. It's actually very close. Anyway, uh, Game of Watch, D tier, done. Next. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're very simple. They're very... I mean, the the big thing you can say about the Game & Watch is that was the first place you saw a D-pad. I was, now, I was going to say that. However, this is not that. This is ball, and it did not have a D-pad. So. Well, the Game & Watch is... When you say the Game & Watch, because there's there was like a bunch of different Game & Watches. It, it wasn't just like one system and you plug in different games you know that you would want to play you had you had to actually go out and buy a brand new game and watch if you want to play a different game uh, so, so it, it reminds me a lot of the tiger electronics stuff that we used to play a lot as as a kid yeah i mean everybody had those because they were 15 bucks and there was every franchise that you were into in the early 90s mm -hmm. you know and it shuts you up on car rides so <laughs> that you wouldn't bug your parents um southern beaker in the chat says milton bradley microvision that is the name of the weird thing that said blockbuster yes. on it now and that that came out first interchangeable actually cartridges. 1979 that has interchangeable cartridges wow so yeah so that that whole gray thing is just a shell and you pull it out and then you plug in another like module that takes the place of like that bottom black part and those like blue buttons and even the screen changes what in the hell so so is so do you control it with a dial? Well, certain games, like something like Breakout and probably Blockbuster, you control with a dial. Okay. So uh, I'm going to... Uh, this is the first one that had interchangeable cartridges. Now, the interchangeable cart cartridges, I'm inclined to make it higher than the, ga than the game to watch. Right. Um, and Breakout, Breakout still... is a great game. Ball yeah. is not that good. I don't think I'm putting it in C, but I'm definitely putting it above Game of Watch. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely more advanced and more interesting than Game and Watch, um, but I don't think, you know, it, it's any better in terms of, like, raw gameplay than mm -hmm. a Game and Watch. Right. So Okay. Uh, now, now, if they're... Well, the first one with the D-pad, I think, was Donkey Kong, right? Yes. And if that was on here, I might put it in C because the D-pad, very right. important. Uh, but no, this is just ball. So, no, sorry. Listen, uh, uh, I know it's like paving the way for video games, but uh, would you rather play ball or would you rather play a Nintendo Switch? That's the type of things yeah. we got to pin <laughs> against each other in a stupid list like this. Uh Otaku Sam says, we going to talk about those handheld Sonic video games from McDonald's Happy Meals. <laughs> those were basically Game & Watches. There is a way to add stuff to this, isn't there? I mean, we did a tier list once uh, and I was able to add my own stuff. I I don't know. I don't know. Why I was... are you going to add No. Those those Sonic Happy Meal toys? <laughs> I was considering it, but no. All right. Uh, anyway, what's next chronologically? Uh, that would next be... chronologically is the Game Boy, the original gray, gray box. Okay, now this one, this particular tier list separates Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Okay. So we gotta, we gotta rate the Game Boy on its own, outside of the color. I think it's a phenomenal system, very important for gaming, and has a lot of great games. Not nearly as much as the Game Boy Color modifier that you throw onto it. Right. Uh, also, the screen is absolute garbage, but yes. nobody knew any better at the time. Yes. Uh, also, um, the Game Boy Pocket is not on here. True. However, I would say the Game Boy Pocket does improve on the screen. Much Does. the same way the Xbox 360 Slim removed the Red Ring of Death issue. I don't think it improved it that much. A little bit, because it wasn't green. It was more pure black and white. Oh, well, that's it's like, it's like not addressing the problem at all. The problem is 
I can't see the damn thing if I'm not in right. direct sunlight. Uh, um, Game Boy Light improved on the screen, but uh, right. we didn't have the pleasure of having that over in the States. Mm-hmm. So uh, this one's hard because I love the Game Boy, uh, but I know it's not, you know, like it's still it's got a lot of amazing games and I, I i love the design of it i love the the look of all of the games uh it feels really good the the buttons are laid out perfectly the screen is ass but you can modify it to look really good and it has a huge like modding culture even now to this day so that yes. makes me want to rank it a little higher than normal but it, it in the grand scheme of things uh the original gray launch dmg friggin uh game boy it's like it's not that great <laughs> i would give it b tier because that's right in the middle the only thing that's list. the only thing that's making me want to put it higher is the is the modding community that it still has to this day right i'm gonna keep it at the top of b for now okay yeah i think that's fair because it it you know, it is probably the most important handheld system ever. Uh, it still has a lot of great games on it. Um, it paved the way for everything. However, it is dated as all get out. You know, it's, yes. it's just as dated as the NES for different reasons. So what is next now? Uh, uh, the Atari Lynx. Uh, dog shit. Yeah, yes. that's a bad system. Uh, the only thing the Atari Lynx has going for it is it's the original home of Chip's Challenge. Oh, top of D then. <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. Um, I've been watching this video series by a guy, Jeremy Parrish, um, where he goes through like the history of video games, game at a time. Mm-hmm. And he has been talking about the Atari Lynx. And from what he says about it, it's it's very it was actually very technologically advanced at the time it came out a year after uh the original no it came out the same year as the original game boy sorry um and it had a full color screen it had a much higher um cpu um it can play you can play it either horizontally or vertically oh uh, that explains the the buttons yeah the buttons are weird yeah you have so B and A have... at the top, and then you have mm-hmm. upside down B and A at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. So, because you can play it either traditionally or you can turn it vertically to play certain games. Okay. And also of note, uh, the speaker is right where the palm would be. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're going to cover up the friggin' speaker. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so th- I, I don't uh, I think there's an on button and an off button right on the face. That's so weird. This is yeah. a weird design. I'm not. It's a... no. Hey, look, I'm not. I'm not gonna say that the Lynx is a hidden gem or like you know a, a secret dark horse console. It's not the Sega Dreamcast of handhelds or anything. Um, it it belongs in D where you put it. I'm just trying to, you know, ex you know. Mi- give it some credit <laughs> mm-hmm. rather right. than just shitting on it without you know really going through it and talking about it i completely understand will yeah now next up is what we have a lot of the old ga- systems on here next year next up is the game gear okay now i loved our game gear and yes, we had we some had great a, games on we it we had a game gear the game gear it, I remember we put like the master system pretty low on our uh, console tier list, and I said at the time the better, the best version of master system was the Game Gear, and I right, stand exactly. by that. Um, however, the Game Gear was not perfect. Uh, it ate batteries like a monster. Mm-hmm. You go through. It took six double A's normally, and it would go through six double A's in an hour like it, it was a disaster you basically needed a battery pack to play it that's what we had the um, little battery pack thing yeah uh the screen was 
good, but it was very prone to like you know wear and tear over the years like the, ours the, our screen is completely shot so the screen at the time was incredible yeah but, it was like a high quality crt screen yeah it was like a c they shoved the frigate crt into this thing and the, the problem was it had crazy ghosting and and uh yeah. and uh it was like like animations were blurry and stuff but at the time we were like this is so sick this is so much better than a game boy yeah um so i mean it, it was beautiful uh it is it is chunky the whole system itself um it's like barely comfortable because of how heavy it is but it i mean it has good grips especially with the battery pack that we had on it um the problem was like it had the better versions of the master system games but uh it still didn't have that many great games Mm -hmm. which is uh gonna gonna ruin a console yeah um also, it, it it's not as bad as a Red Ring of Death, but uh, throughout the years, uh, there's a transistor inside of here that will just die, uh, and it happens yeah. to every single Game Gear. So eventually, if you want to still play a Game Gear, you have to replace a transistor that's on the board. So it has a fatal flaw that you will eventually run into if you want, if you have an old Game Gear and want to play it again. So uh, that's I feel like my dock a point or something yeah um and also not nearly as iconic as as a game boy <laughs> no so um so i i don't want to put it it's definitely not going above the game boy no no definitely not this this uh, might be a solid c i think so i think it's a i think it's a solid c i was at um the Long Island Eternal Con this weekend. Um, my first convention in God knows how long. Really weird. Uh, half the people were in masks, half weren't. Uh, but there was a vendor who was selling a Game Gear. Mm-hmm. And I didn't ask what it, what he was selling it for because A, I wasn't sure if the thing was going to work. And B, I saw what he was selling his other systems for and it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know if this is going to be the same thing when, like, when you go to too many games, but, like, convention prices are much higher than they were in 2019. Convention prices on retro stuff are always crazy. Too many games is usually not too bad because there's a lot of options. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, convention prices on retro stuff are always pretty bad. Not Not just retro systems, but, like, action figures were insane. Uh, a lot of comics that I bought like years ago for decent prices have skyrocketed mm-hmm. for no real reason. It's it's bizarre. I, I don't know if it's because at Eternal Con there weren't a lot of vendors, so they can felt they can get away with that, or if because you know we're dealing in a pandemic recession or whatnot. It's because uh, it's because people know. It's, 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 people know they can capitalize on the uh, on the fanatical uh, uh, fan bases of the of this sort of stuff. Yeah, P- people watch a lot of pawn stars, and now they yeah. they know what things are worth. Um, but anyway, I also went to a convention this weekend, and it was also weird. But there weren't that many people. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too crazy. It was I went to play New York City. It was it was pretty good. Oh, yeah. It was all indie stuff. I, uh, what was funny though at Eternal Con though was at the back of the room they had like all the, the guest signings like all the celebrities and stuff you know D-list you know former TV celebrities and the cast of Red Dead Redemption too were oh. there um, but I the one I, that I noticed was Amy Jo Johnson the original Pink Power Ranger oh. um, Kimberly was there and she was wearing a mask like you know a regular, not, a, not a Power Rangers mask like an actual mask and people were getting pictures with her how sad is that gonna look? <laughs> like when you look back, like here's my picture with Amy Jo Johnson, and it's you and some random chick in a mask. Yeah, and it's like it's a, a yeah. You can't. It could be anybody. Yeah. Um, no, I I just yeah. It's, conventions are weird nowadays. Uh. All right. Now <clears throat> we have the game gear. Next, next is the Turbo Express. I don't know anything about. Wait, is that the one on the bottom right? the yeah next to the game boy color okay this we, is the one we saw last week and i had to explain that it is basically a portable turbo graphics 16 right it looks like one of those portable tvs 
Yeah, it essentially was. Um, so this is literally just a portable version of the TurboGrafx-16 or the PC Engine for you uh, Japanese viewers out there. Um, you would plug your actual TurboGrafx Hue cards, which was what the games came on, into uh, the Turbo Express, and you could have the full console experience on the go. Uh, much like the Game Gear, this thing ate batteries like you wouldn't believe. It had the same had this, the same type of screen. And therefore, the same transistor problems. Yeah, it looks. Um, it looks like it has. I've seen right here on Google Images a transistor kit to fix yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it also. It looks like. It looks like somebody saw the Game Boy, saw the Game Gear, and was like, "I know how to solve this," <laughs> <laughs> and just made a, a, a weird Ben Heck version of both. Yeah. Um. So honestly this looks like it's pretty good it's just you know what games were on the turbo graphics that i would have wanted yeah. to play on here that's the thing like i think most people the turbo graphics is known for like bonks adventure which i'm mm. a fan of um a couple of shoot 'em up type games and then you have but then like a lot of the games that people remember like uh castlevania rondo of blood um that was a cd a turbo cd game which you're not gonna mm. be able to play on this so, uh, so it it took full Turbo Graphics cartridges. Was it was this like the Sega yeah. Nomad of of Turbo yeah. Graphics? Yeah, it was the Sega Nomad before the Sega Nomad. I think that's pretty cool because I, I the idea of a of a of being able to take your home games because I mean having a handheld games is great, but had the idea mm -hmm. of taking your home games and bringing them with you portably is awesome. Yeah. Uh we even see that now with the switch um yeah the only problem here is that the games are not good <laughs> so yeah the turbo graphics 16 i think only have like 96 games released in the new us mm -hmm. um so that's not a big library um it also require i'm looking at the wikipedia page now it also required six double a batteries that only lasted Ouch. three hours <laughs> compared to the game boys um 40 hour on four double a batteries so yeah it's the same it pretty much most of the same issues as the game gear are in the turbo express also in, it's much larger i'm inclined to put this top of d or bottom of c i would say bottom of c okay because it it's definitely better than anything in the D class. So it's above Atari but, Lynx and below yes. Game Gear. Because I would could say it's comparable to Game Gear. The only difference is Game Gear had better games, I think. Yeah. I mean the only thing that like I I feel like the thing that gives it a one up is that you can play your home games on it. It's just the home games are bad. <laughs> so <laughs> it really doesn't help that much yeah uh, um all right what's next what is this guy uh what are you looking at all the way to the top left is that even what's next uh no what is next okay is the virtual boy <laughs> okay i don't think this is a handheld am i am i wrong to say that like it, it does so it have a battery in it yes it does it does have a the, the battery goes in the controller oh and you can you can also purchase like an ac adapter for the virtual boy here's the thing nintendo marketed it as a portable system they okay. marketed it as a as a system that you can take with you places the problem is in practicality you couldn't really take it anywhere because you had to place it on a table mm -hmm. in order to play. Not only that, the thing was very big. You, you couldn't easily fit this in a bag or anything like that. So it's this weird... It, it's a home console that wanted you to go out into the world with it. <laughs> yeah this like i know people are making fun of the game gear for being 
big and like is it really portable if it's that big um yeah. then you have this monstrosity i don't think uh i don't think it counts but i will say the first mario tennis yes has that it's got that to be to be fair most of the games on the virtual boy weren't bad games necessarily the problem with the virtual boy was the way you played it because you had to stick your face into this weird machine and play weird red and black games that like one eye had one uh, part of the screen and the other eye had another part of the screen so you basically had like that 3ds style 3d effect yeah, I'm, wa I'm watching. Doesn't a really work very well. I'm watching a long play right now on YouTube, and it's it's showing both screens. Yeah, like ew. Just show one of them. <laughs> I'd rather this just show one stretched out. This is Mario Clash, which it looks weird. It looks like a weird game. It's like an updated version of uh, Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. So. I'm gonna see if the Virtual Boy is on game rankings because honestly, oh, that's Metacritic. Um, I don't think ranking? it is. I think it predates. I think it predates game rankings. Is well, game rankings I, I know has a lot of retro stuff. Is is game rankings around True. anymore? Uh, oh, I don't know. It should be GameRankings.com, right? Hold on, I'm just oh now Metacritic isn't working. GameRankings.com. I, oh, it takes you to Metacritic. Oh, wow. Shoot. This is a, this is a sad day for uh, video game fans, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Mario Clash isn't on Metacritic at all. I'm just trying to see what the best games were. And honestly, I don't think there's any good games on here. I don't think there's a single one where I'm like, I need to, I need to whip out a virtual boy. Because I got to I mean, play some Mario Clash. I think in the United States, there were only like 14 games released for the mm -hmm. Virtual Boy. I think not, Sam, not really my a library. roommate, had one. I think Does he, he did. still have it? I doubt it. But I remember, I, I remember going to his house and playing it like one time. <laughs> oh, this is giving me a stroke. There's a Gundam game yeah. on here. Probably one of the... Uh, only released in Japan games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought uh, the Wario game was really good. Wario Land. That was just it's just it's just Wario Land though. Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't uh, this for the Game Boy? Can I just play this on Game Boy? No, it's a, it's a different. It's a different kind of Wario Land. Virtual Boy, Wario Land was the name of it. It just looks like Wario. It, it wasn't a port of Wario Land. Oh, it's better graphics than the Game Boy. I will say that, even though it's only like yeah. two colors. Yeah. Or no, it's the same four bit. No, two bit. It's the same two bit that a Game Boy is, but it has a higher resolution. It looks like. Yeah. Virtual Boy resolution. Uh. Yep. Oh, it's like double three eighty four by two twenty four. Well, keep in mind, there's two screens in there right so is that combined or per screen that's combines i think mm -hmm. yeah it's still bigger than a than a than a game boy screen it's it's still a right. higher resolution uh but it's eight it would be 192 by 224 so they're like tall it's like taller right i think it's probably stretched. Oh, now everybody sees all of our analytics from the Wolf Den podcast account. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Oh, there you go. We there made $160 last, in the last 28 days. Yay. All right. That's, that's, all, <laughs> that's not, not even close to what I pay Will to put the podcasts up. <laughs> well, you got to spend money to make money. <laughs> it's true. Um, Please like and and subscribe, please. Yeah. We, we, we're, we're in the red. <laughs> anyway, uh, Virtual Boy, not a handheld. I'm going to stick not a hand to that. Not a uh, good handheld. And not even any good games. Uh, yeah. Resolution's kind of cool. 
Uh, it's 3D, yay. I want to put it in D, but where in D? I don't... Uh, it's also incredibly God, it, it, uncomfortable to play. Yeah. Maybe like in the middle of D. I'll put it in front of the blockbuster. Okay. Or yeah, cause it, or whatever the hell it's called. Because uh, at least it says Wario Land. I don't know. Yeah. Not in the red, Bob. You're just looking at the analytics through a virtual boy. <laughs> 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 Thanks, dude. All right, we got a bunch of notifications here that I missed. We got, uh, where am I? Um, oh, we are, there's a lot here. Uh, Late Snake, 250 bits. Sega missed Saturn and just, oh, I read that. Dragon Armor, 14 months. Thanks for the wholesome content. Also, are you going to take into account backwards compatibility for handhelds? Maybe? Yeah. We haven't uh, gotten that far yet. Yeah, but I think... Specifically with one system, it will be important. Uh, Palladium Paladin, thanks for 10 bits. Zonum, thanks for the eight months. Eight months and still no toy channel from Will. Yeah, blame him. Yeah, sorry. Ray Zeflin, thanks for the 35 months. Seem like that tier list forgot about the DSi, just like Nintendo. <laughs> I don't think the DSi added anything no the well, ds didn't already have the um whatchamacallit the the game boy advance sp is not on this list either uh so. ray says is the oculus handheld honestly i might say yes the oculus quest because you just yeah, put it on I your mean, face if it's, not, if it's not tethered to anything yeah i mean if the ver if you strap the virtual if the virtual boy had a head strap then, then yeah, it would have been a more portable system. Yes, but you have it to didn't. play it on like a bipod yeah. with, a, with a table. Um, C K S I I I. Thank you for the prime. Uh, Palette and Palladium. Thanks for the more money. Co Co Anthony Carvoni. Thanks for the eight months. Do you guys have a drink of choice? I just turned twenty-one, and I'm curious. I don't drink much. I yeah. when I go out, I get an old-fashioned. And I just have that. I try to have one and make it last the whole night. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, I'm kind of a basic bitch when it comes to my alcohol. Um, I used to I used to like Jack and Coke a lot. Um, and in terms of beer, I'm, I like Sam Adams stuff, and that's about it. Um, I, I or like... if you're on Long Island, you should check out a Barn Rocker, the official beer of uh the New York Islanders. That's pretty good. But other than that, yeah, that's what I got. Sam Adams. For for, for beer, I like Blue Moon and uh, Montauk has some good summer beers. Yes. If you're talking about yes. Long Island. Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't really, again, I don't really drink. I'll have like one yeah. drink and that's it. Same. Same. Um, so just because you're 21 doesn't mean you have to drink. I didn't start, no. I didn't start drinking until and i still I, I never drank that much but i didn't start consuming alcohol until i was 22 for some reason <laughs> you just wanted to make sure i just wanted to make sure yeah how to how to make, make double sure uh Ak meisters with the four months king shark goes nom nom okay whatever you say he, he sure does elite oh is that a suicide squad thing yeah uh, Elite Ben, thank you for the two months. Question for Will: What are some great Nightwing comics, or even just good comics with Dick Grayson? If you want Nightwing specifically, the current run by Tom Taylor is excellent. If you want to get started right now, definitely check out that. I think it was like issue seventy-seven was when he started. In terms of classic stuff, uh, Kyle Higgins' work uh, during the New Fifty Two was very good. Um, the original Chuck Dixon run was also very good although i should warn you chuck dixon is a bad person uh <laughs> just keep that in mind um yeah those are those are the three i would recommend the chuck dixon's era kyle uh kyle higgins era and the current tom taylor era so now where are we on this list uh well, we just do the virtual boy yes uh, next is the Nomad, the Sega Nomad, only released in North America in 1995. I did not know that. 
Yeah. Um, this was the holy grail for us because it was like <laughs> the Game Gear, but it could play our home games. So the better stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it is everything pretty much the Turbo Gra- the Turbo Express did years ago, but with better games because it was Genesis. Yeah, it was a whole ass Genesis. It was weird yeah. that it, it, it like uh it it, it it wasn't like straight. It like it like had an angle to it. Yeah, it, very weird design. Um it had a controller port in it so that you could also plug in a second controller and do multiplayer games. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's not on the bottom. It also had um a, it had video out so you can connect it to a TV. Wow. So it was basically a whole ass uh Sega Genesis. It could do everything a Sega yes. Genesis could do. That's yeah. freaking crazy. Uh it was except it was not compatible with the Sega C D or 32X. But okay. really who cares? Yeah, who cares about that? Uh okay. I think th- th- what was the problem? Was it expensive? It was it was expensive. It also ran on like a lot of batteries that only lasted like two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, same screen problems that the Game Gear had. Yeah, I- that, that's that's the thing with like a lot of these like Game Boy competitors. They had like much more advanced looking technology in it. But it would always lead to all these extra problems, like issues with the screen, issues with battery life, issues with transistors, and things like that. So, I, I remember it coming out later. It came out yeah, in '95, but I remember which it, was the year the PlayStation came out, and I think also the uh, year the Saturn came out. Right. So, so it was yeah. it it was at the end of the Genesis life cycle. So yeah. that that makes sense. Um. Okay, so that that was probably its detriment was that it it was such a cool idea, but it was way too late. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know where to put this because I mean it's it's yeah. better than the Game Gear. Yes. The biggest problem is that it came out a little too late, but but that shouldn't. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, we're we're in 2021, baby. I'd still rather play a Nomad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to put uh... it top of C. Okay. Should it go in bottom of B, though? No. Okay. Because I don't think... I don't think it did anything to... You know, get to the same level as the Game Boy. You know? It still has a lot of the same problems that the Game Gear and the Turbo Express had. Okay. Uh, All right. What's next? Uh, next on our list after the Nomad um, is the Game Boy Pocket, which is not on this list, although that would probably go uh, ahead of the Game Boy regular, I think. Um, but after that, it's the GameCom. <laughs> we had a GameCom. We had a GameCom. We bought it. We bought it many years later when it was in the clearance bin of KB Toys. <laughs> we we knew we bought that for a novelty. Mm-hmm. Like we we knew we bought that just to have it. Well, it was we very it was cool to have it. It was very cheap. It yeah. was thin. Uh, it uh, it had Mortal Kombat and some Sonic game. Yes, it had a lot of like weird ports to it. It had Mortal Kombat trilogy, which we had. It's the worst version of that game. It had a Sonic game. It had Duke Nukem. It had Resident Evil Two on there. Um. Resident Evil 2? Yeah, Resident Evil 2. Weird camera angles and everything. The thing is, the GameCom had an even worse screen than a Game Boy Pocket. Um, it, oh my it god, had, this, like, is, this looks terrible. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's this, like an MS-DOS uh, version. So this was, this was made by Tiger. The same people mm. who made those Tiger electronic handhelds. And this was them trying to do their own version of the Game Boy with very bad results. Mm -hmm. It had a shitty touchscreen. You could hook it up to a modem and, like, get your emails on it, but you had to physically hardwire it to a modem in order to access that functionality, which defeats the point of a portable system. Yeah, uh... 
this is uh this was dog shit it had it didn't have any good games it had zero no, good didn't games. have any good games it, it is the definition of a novelty i would put this if we could add an f tier <laughs> yeah i would can but I? if you don't want it i think you can if you I think if you hit the gear a add a icon. add a row below uh yeah we're gonna do red uh f yeah did i do this right oh oh no oh no i screwed it up oh, d uh d was green oh d was green why would it be green yeah i don't know and now we have new let's make this red and then let's make it f yeah or is or is it here we'll make it blue there you go gamecom f we made a whole tier just for you gamecom you were trash yeah. um because yeah. even like all the other stuff like the microvision or the game the game and watch like you can defend to an extent i don't think there are any redeeming qualities about uh the gamecom right uh okay next uh next is next is the Game Boy Color. What is this one on the top left that I have? I keep expecting that to be it. That's in the OGO. Oh, so that's not ready yet. We're not there yet. Not we're not there yet. All right, Game Boy Color that has to go right above the regular Game Boy because it is yes. the Game Boy, but better. But do we put it in A tier? It did have the the some of the better games yes it had a lot of games that took full advantage of the fact that it was color um the one that sticks out in our mind specifically is metal gear solid aka metal gear ghost babble that's yeah that's the best game boy game ever created yeah uh i mean there was other like super mario deluxe um super mario deluxe uh the, the dx version of Link's awakening mm -hmm. um Pokemon, uh, uh, what was it? Gold and silver. No, the other, diamond and pearl. I think are, are the are the color ones. Really? Go, gold and silver was both. Gold and silver came out during the color, but it was it was one of those cartridges that that played on uh, both. Okay, I got you. I got you. Uh, diamond and pearl was a uh, was the specifically uh, color one. Yeah. Um. So. And it was it was a better form factor, even though it had a little bump on the back. Uh, yeah, it, no, was it still... definitely was a better form factor. Yeah, yeah, it was it was. Uh, Diamond and Pearl was DS, not Game Boy. Crystal, Crystal was the one. It was just one. I well, know I know so much about Pokemon, guys. Uh, all right, it's AJ in the chat. Was Crystal like the like the? Oh, crystal was like the like the, the yellow, action. yeah, of of uh, yeah. gold and silver. Yeah, gold, gold and silver were for the Game Boy Color, and then crystal was also for the Game Boy Color. Yeah, but crystal was one of the cartridges that only worked on the Game Boy Color. Not according to the box art on Wikipedia. Oh my fucking god. The cartridge is a Game Boy Color cartridge. I'm looking at it right now. I don't see anything that says only on Game Boy Color. It it it's one of the it's it, it, it the top doesn't have a notch in it. You know, it's one of those cartridges that you that you. Oh just, yeah. You, although I could just be looking. I mean, some of these are are fucking fake yeah. anyway. Crystal was Game Boy Color exclusive and Game Boy Advanced ad enhanced. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, like you could play them in a regular Game Boy, but if you play them in Game Boy Color, you have like special features. Yeah, gold also says color on the side, but gold has the little notch on the top. So yeah. you, so you, you could play it in a regular Game Boy. Anyway, uh, yeah. Honestly, the Game Boy Color 
it, not much different, but it could play like a lot more games. So, uh, yeah. uh, and and it's a better form factor. So it it mm-hmm. it belongs right above the regular Game Boy, I think. Okay. Uh, and I th- I think that's all I really have to say about the Game Boy Color. There's okay. no Game Boy Pocket on here. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a Game Boy Advance, which we'll get to. All uh, right, what's before we? Next is finally the Neo Geo. Oh pocket. yay! I finally get to put this thing in like D or F. What is it? I don't even know no, anything about it's... it. So the Neo Geo Pocket was um, it was a handheld system released in 1998. Um, there was a the one you see here is the black and white version, though there was a color version released a few years later. Um, it had, I mean, Neo Geo is best known for their fighting games. So there are a lot of fighting games on there. Um, there was an excellent Sonic the Hedgehog game on here though. Oh, uh, yes. Which I was going to buy at, the last Long Island Retro Gaming Expo we went to, but you talked me out of it because we don't own a Neo Geo. <laughs> so, thanks, Bob. Um, this system has a very dedicated cult following. People love this thing because it does have a lot of good, uh, interesting games on it. This, there's nothing particularly wrong with the system itself. Like, it doesn't use like a, a fancy TV-style screen. Um, it doesn't destroy batteries like a lot of other portable systems did. Um, the graphics were nice and clean. Uh, the controls felt very good to use. I think the problem, the problem with this is that there, it came out at a time when it came out in like '98 when mm-hmm. Pokemon was hitting its stride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was no way another handheld was going to be able to compete with that. That's... Let alone a, a handheld from a company like Neo Geo, who didn't succeed in the home console business. What made them think they're going to succeed in the the portable business? If you if you haven't figured out the theme here, it's that uh, the technology can be really cool, but if it doesn't have the games, then no one's going to want it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I mean, that's part of the problem is we're not fighting game people. This Sonic game looks great though. It's a Sonic you know, the Hedgehog I, Pocket I Adventure. Have... I I played this on an emulator and it's actually not a bad game at all. I kind of wish this was like ported to other systems because like it, people should check it out. Uh, maybe I will through an emulator one of these days. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, this system looks really cool uh, upon second glance, but again, yeah. uh. I mean, it had good fighting games, but here, here's the conundrum, though. We don't care about any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, uh, also, like, who's played competitive fighting games by themselves portably? You know. Well, I mean, it it had. I mean, these games had multiplayer. They they did sell a link cable for it, but mm-hmm. that would require you both had to have a copy of the game. One of you had to have a link cable. Um, it didn't just have fighting games. There was a version of Pac-Man on it. They had puzzle games like your typical portable does. It had a decent range of games. It's just that, again, this came out right when Pokemon skyrocketed to the moon. And it was made by a company that didn't have success in the hardware business to begin with. Right. So I don't really think this console stood a chance. Yeah. Um. So, bottom of C? I would put it at the top of C. Top of C. Because honestly, there's nothing... No, it's not going above the Nomad. Okay. It's going behind the Nomad. Okay, fine. I just think that there's nothing technically wrong with it. It's just, it, it didn't come out. It came out at the wrong time, and it didn't have the the monetary support a system like this would need to go up against Nintendo. Well, of course, if it came out like two years earlier, it might yeah. it might have been cool technology, but uh, technology is moving really fast around this time. Uh, yeah. And uh, it might have had more developer support. It had some pretty decent developer support looking at it, but uh, uh, it looked like it fizzled out really quickly. So, yeah. 
It's, it's I mean, it might have some decent games, but the Sega Nomad has all of the Sega Genesis games. So yeah. Anyway, uh, next up, what do we uh, got? I don't see the Wonder Swan on here, so yes, we'll people who are were people were talking about the Wonder Swan. Where would we put the Wonder Swan? I don't know. I, I all I, I know is that there is a huge cult following to this, and I see it in retro game stores all the time, and I see the people Wonder, who mod the about consoles the Swan, mod this thing too. The Wonder Swan was a Japanese only system, uh, made by Bandai, and it was developed by Gunpei Yokoi after he left Nintendo and before mm -hmm. his death. So. That's why I think the Wonder Swan is as well known as it is, and that's another system that like you could hold horizontally, horizontally and vertically. Mm -hmm. Um, other than I'm trying to think of like, I can't tell you a single game that came out on the Wonder Swan, and I I've so far been able to tell you a game that came out on all these stupid things. <laughs> Yeah, I see the wonder. I see the wonder swan. Yeah, I see the wonder swan a lot. I see it in a lot of retro game stores, like like tons of them. Yeah. And I, I see them. People mod them and stuff. Uh, I also could not tell you what games are on them. Uh, Mister Morrow streams says Wonder Swan would go under Game Boy Color because it had all the Final Fantasy games except three. Um, I mean that means nothing for us. <laughs> yeah, and I Klonoa. <laughs> uh yeah. super gem fighter digimon 1999 what uh, uh it had a version of tetris and one piece it, it's got a lot of uh, uh anime games invaders. And stuff. yeah chocobo chocobo's mysterious dungeon yeah i i we're not putting this on this list <laughs> yeah. but if we had i don't know to, where we go honestly yeah uh yeah i don't know i don't know none I of guess these games are for us here but Maybe bottom of C, uh, yeah. but but yeah, we're not we're not we're not even we're not even gonna try. Uh, are yeah. we at the end gauge yet? <laughs> uh, no. Now we're at the Game Boy Advance. Now we're getting to the good stuff. It took us this long to get to the good stuff, but now we're on the good stuff. Yes. Uh, S tier. Game Boy Advance. Yes. Not even kidding. Not even, not even, you know, jo jumping I'm, around, not trolling. It's S tier. I'm not going to fight you on this. I think the Game Boy Advance has some of the best sprite work of any console generation. Yes. Best sprite work of any console generation. Some of the best games of that entire generation, period. Uh, this was the, the era where uh, 2D Metroidvanias were at their peak with both Castlevania and Metroid putting out some of their best work on the entire franchise um you had uh you had like the sonic advanced games which were back to basic sonic games at a time where they were still trying to figure out what the hell to do in 3d mm -hmm. you had uh, a lot of great ports of super nintendo games um you had oh uh, what else did you have there you, you, had, you, you, you had, had like a lot of you had a lot of ports for a lot of mario games um yeah they might have been a little pri well no they weren't that pricey compared to no. what they were uh but i think you hit it on the head that um a lot of franchises were transitioning to 3d and a lot of a lot of franchises were transitioning to 3d but they already hit their stride in 2d and they had a little more power to make some cool sprites they had uh yeah. they, they had some some room for experimentation but they could still make the games really simple and fun so uh i think that a lot of franchises best work is here on this game boy advance like yeah. metroid yes. metroid fusion zero mission you could watch uh, shrek on it like winter chip says you can, you, you can watch shrek on it advanced wars it also... is a game that is a strategy game that uh everybody thinks is like the best strategy game of all time yeah I know a lot of people who bought Game Boy Advance systems just for Advance Wars. Um, yeah, it had a lot of like cool experimental games on it, uh, like the WarioWare games, uh, like Ninja 5 uh Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Um, 
had like a real portable renaissance on this stupid system, even though it was like a weird isometric um, viewpoint of it. Yeah, and I don't, and... I can't, I can't think of anything wrong with the Game Boy Advance. It had uh, Mega Man Zero. Mm -hmm. So the problem with the Game Boy Advance is that when it came out, the screen was still bad. <laughs> yeah. The screen was better, it just didn't have a backlight. Nintendo still never figured out how to fix the screen. I don't know what what their problem was. The, we had the technology, they were just like, nah, fuck you, you're still getting a garbage screen. <laughs> and then two years later, they're like, all right, you know what? We'll give you a, we'll give you a front lit uh, yeah. Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP. And you know what? That was good enough. They fixed it, it for It made the you SP. forget. That, it made you forget that the SP did not have a headphone jack. <laughs> Yes. You had to use a dongle. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I agree. This is an S-tier system. We're putting it... S -tier. What, what, what also... Is the first thing above B. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, it's... It was backwards compatible with the entire Game Boy library. And True. they tested every single Game Boy game to make sure it would work on the Game Boy Advance. And apparently, and uh, there were some games that were enhanced on the Game Boy Advance. Yes. Which I did not know that. Uh, what what would they be enhancing anyway? It's mostly just Game Boy Color functionality that you get. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Uh, Mecha Dragon with twenty bits. What's up, bros? Bob, I've been hey. showing my drawing progress to some of my friends. They're saying that I'm getting better at it. I am so proud of myself. You should be proud of yourself. Yeah. The more you do it, the better you'll be. Mr. Morrow streams. The Nomad should... Oh, thank you for the two months. The Nomad should definitely go above the Game Boy. I don't know about A tier, but definitely B tier. Also, please announce to not read the the Devin Grayson run of Nightwing. No, you can read her run. It's just it's not as good as the other ones. It's 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 got like... It, Devin Grayson had like some good issues in Nightwing, but she also had a lot of bad issues in Nightwing. It was a really weird time period. Uh, Devin Grayson's work on Batman, though, much better. Check out her work on Batman. Uh, Thrill House, 100 bits. The real question, where's the Cybico rank? Oh, you can, you can answer emails on that, but they had to be Cybico messages. Yes. <laughs> um... John got the juice with 100 bits. Why are there no leapfrog handholds on this tier list? Well, we almost did one that had a Pico, and we did. Yeah. All right, we gotta get we gotta get quicker here. Are okay. we at the end well, gauge yet? We're at the end gauge now. Yay! The end gauge. So I was I was all over smartphones back of the day i tried so mm -hmm. hard to get mom to give me a made me let me get a smartphone and this was the perfect smartphone for me because <laughs> i could i could talk to people and i could play my games you actually have to hold it sideways oh it does look like you have to hold it sideways yeah. to talk to people so there were two models of it there was the original n-gage and the n-gage qd the qd I don't remember what that stands for, but that one you do not have to hold sideways like an asshole. Quite delicious. Uh, it had it had a lot of names. It did. It had a lot of names. It had Tony Hawk. It had Splinter Cell. It had Son. It had a port of Sonic Advance. Um, the problem with the N gauge, besides running on a garbage OS and being very expensive, um. And having bad controls for a full, uh, it had a full number pad controller control scheme. It was not fun to use uh, for gameplay. Uh, the screen was a cell phone screen, meaning <laughs> it was taller than it was wide. Yes. And for a lot of games, that's not good. That's I... not how you played a lot of games at that time. They had to put it. They had um, Sonic advanced on the end gauge like you like by default was the narrower field of view but they added a button press so that you can get the full widescreen look of sonic advance just so you can play the game yeah it crops it yeah yeah uh because sonic you can't crop you can't cut out the sides it's sonic 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so that that just lowers the resolution even more. Uh, I mean, I've always loved the idea of having games on your phone because you always have your phone with you, so you will always have games with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was just a bad uh, execution here. I feel mm -hmm. like there's I, there's there are still people trying to figure out how to make a gaming phone, and I feel like it's definitely possible, and nobody has has even come close yet. I mean, the problem is, to, in order to have a gaming phone, you need buttons, and you only need doesn't... two buttons and a D-pad. That's what boggles my mind: is that they try to do shit like this with the whole number pad. Well, this is before touchscreen, like before touchscreens, right. like really you still need physical buttons. And in this current age of like the iPhone style, where it's just a flat black monolith, you know, mm -hmm. buttons don't really fly uh, in terms of in terms of cellular telephones. So I don't think anybody would want a phone with buttons on it. Just give me two tiny buttons on the right side, even uh, top and bottom. Just give me a little chin and two buttons and I'm good, baby. We're gaming. I don't know, man. I don't I think it's just you. Um anyway. Uh they should have just turned this thing sideways. I don't know why they didn't just turn the screen sideways. This was really dumb. Cuz it, it's Nokia made it. They're a cell phone company. They only know how to make cell phones, so they put a cell phone screen in their fucking cell phone video game console. <laughs> uh so Do we Okay. I don't think this goes in F. No, this this goes in D hands down. But I'm do gonna, we put it where do we put it in D? I'm gonna put it behind I'm gonna put it at the end of D because okay. they could have done so much better and the game and watch couldn't have done better. <laughs> <laughs> the game and watch came out in nineteen eighty, the end gauge came out way later. They saw all of these other consoles and were like, We're gonna do this and then they fucked yeah. it. So Fair enough. Yeah, the end gauge bottom of D. Uh, I swear these other handhelds are going up to up at the top. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, saving no, a lot. We're saving the top part for the later years. <laughs> um. Anyway, where are we now, Will? I think we're on the PSP. Uh, we're on the DS and the PSP. Yes, the DS. Okay, which one came first? The DS. This is the first DS. Yeah, the first but DS. Kind of a chunker. Kind of a chunker, but honestly, I don't see any real differences between this and the DS Lite, aside from aesthetic design. Like, they're basically the same system. They do the exact same things. They play all the same games. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's... I think they're both, honestly, A-tier systems. Uh, and it does have a whole ass Game Boy Advance in it. Yes. Not you can't play Game Boy Color and be, and previous games up. Only Game Boy Advance. That is dumb. Yeah. That is very dumb. Um I guess they didn't feel like optimizing every single Game Boy. But they said why it's yeah. they should it should have already been done. They already did it with the Game Boy Advance. They already tried every single freaking Game Boy game. Yeah. I I think I don't necessarily know why that is oh no, no i do it has to do with the game boy advance it has to do with the way it reads cartridges like the way the cartridges physically connect to the the game boy advance and the way so it the way it detects backwards compatibility on a game boy advance is it tell it can you know detect it knows how tall the cartridge is basically mm -hmm. and that readable ability is not in the DS or the Game Boy Micro. So that's why it's not backwards compatible with those systems. I think that the light is superior. Uh, it's mostly an aesthetic difference, but also form factor. It's so much better. Right. It, it's you could actually put it in your pocket. The friggin uh, the, the the DS, the regular old DS. That's not going in your pocket unless you got your Janko right. jeans and maybe. Yeah, which at this time you probably did. You probably did. And it was ugly as all sin. Uh, 
<laughs> what games do we love on the DS? Uh, Super Mario, uh, New Super Mario Brothers? New Super Mario Brothers, uh, Trauma Center, Under the Knife was probably what sold me on the system. That mm -hmm. is a fantastic game uh, where you play as a surgeon and you cut people up and then sew them back together. It's great. Um, what else was there? There's Nintendo Dogs, of course, for all you animal lovers. There was uh, a very good Tony Hawk game, Tony Hawk's American Skateland. That was fun. Um, was there Heart, was Mario Heart, Kart... Heart Gold, was that DS or 3DS? That was DS. Heart Gold is the better that version of, of, yes. of Gold. Uh, yeah. So uh, I would include that. There, Mario Kart 7. No, not Mario Kart 7. Mario Kart DS was a hell of a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the first uh, Nintendo game with online connectivity. So, people are saying rate it with the light. I don't want to. I think the light is better. <laughs> so uh, I, and it came out two so years later. That so that thing that I thought was a game, was a DS light is actually a DSi. Oh oh. Oh, okay. So I will be I will be rating it like with the light because the DSI I think is worse than the light. I'm gonna say it. Yeah. All it did yeah. was add the, the DS, camera, and it had it like, added the camera. It it added the camera, um, the ability to download games and only like you know micro games, and it took out Game Boy Advance backwards compatibility. And and it oh I didn't realize that. It it had a, a handful of proprietary games, which is why it's on this list. Uh, by yeah. itself uh and they didn't d deserve to be proprietary it's just because they had a camera uh it yeah. was stupid anyway also right razzle jazzle thank you for reminding me of sonic rush one of the best sonic games of all time on the ds so we're enough to buy it I'll, I'll rank the ds with the ds light we put it in a I would put it in A. I think it is an A tier system. All right, I'm only agreeing with you because uh, it has a whole ass Game Boy Advance in it, and Game Boy Advance yeah. is S tier. So, I'll, I'll, I, I honestly, I think there's more better 3DS games than there are regular DS games. Really? Oh, there's also Brain Age. I forgot about Brain Age. Uh, oh, yeah. DS DSI. I want to rank pretty low. Honestly, I would put that in low B. Yeah. Because it's still a DS, but it's not a it's like a worse version of the DS. Significantly worse. It's so you only play in DS yeah. games and yeah, it's, it, they added functionality that we didn't need. Um yeah. Okay. Now we're on PSP? Now we're on PSP. Okay. On uh, paper this should have been the better system than the DS, but it absolutely was not. <laughs> a lot of people love the the PSP. Uh, I know a lot of people love to mod a PSP. Yes, uh, and it had a lot of great uh, JRPGs and whatnot, and a lot of uh, PlayStation fanboys uh, love the PSP. Uh, yeah. it, it had a spinning disc in it, which was it not the best UMG idea. Discs, which was <laughs> you, you, people. That was one of those things where people thought that was a good idea because you know everything else was using discs at the time, and discs could hold more of uh, content than cartridges just did. But when you realize it's a portable system and then you do a lot of moving around with it and there are a lot of moving parts in a CD reader, that that could lead to problems. Also, load times on a portable system is not great. It, 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 it That was a spec on paper, but yeah. it didn't... I, I mean, and the screen was beautiful. Uh, and the, the graphics screen. were great, uh, but... Uh, it 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 didn't it, it it had a lot of problems it was faulty because it had a it had a physical like spinning disc in it yeah. uh and i mean the games couldn't compare to game boy advance and ds games i remember at the time every time i saw somebody with a psp nobody was playing games on it <laughs> they were either watching movies or listening to music using it as an mp3 player nobody really played games on it they really just use it for the other functionality mm -hmm. and i think that's a detriment to the system as a video game system so, so, so it was a, it was more so like a media player yeah also it took memory cards that were pr proprietary and very expensive well 
No, they took memory stick memory cards, which were made by Sony, mm -hmm. but those could also be used in other devices like cameras and other MP3 players and stuff. Mm -hmm. they, they were like Sony's answer to SD cards. They weren't proprietary. It's just that because Sony made it, they wanted to use it on the they, PSP. They were Sony. That's what led to a, They were Sony's led, own thing. Right. But they weren't proprietary in the same way that PlayStation Vita right. memory cards were proprietary. A lot of the mods and stuff that you can do to the PSP were because it used memory sticks. Because those were easier to crack and like upload your own software onto. The the only game that re I, oh it had Burnout Legends. Yeah. The only game that I played extensively, and the only game that I really wanted was Peace Walker, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, right. and that came out really late in the uh, life cycle of the PSP. Yeah, uh, and that game was phenomenal. Uh, and it was very advanced for a handheld game. Uh, yeah. but otherwise everything here had better versions somewhere else. Yes. Uh, a lot of these games too also had PS2 ports like, um, the two Grand Theft Auto games that came out on PSP, Liberty City Stories and Vice City Stories. Those are also on PS2. What about um, Chinatown Wars? That was also on the DS. Right. Right. I think this was the version, though. The the, the one on the PSP was the one. And God well, of War one, Chain of Olympics the... is the is the number one on Metacritic, and uh I don't think uh I don't I don't think that's enough. Chinatown Wars originally came out on the DS, and then it got ported to the PSP because not many people bought it on the DS. Oh, I didn't know that. You don't... I thought... You don't buy it. You don't buy it. Yes, to play Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I literally. It would make more sense for it to be on this. Yeah. Patapon. People like Patapon. Uh. So yeah, we're not gonna. We're not, we're not ranking PSP too high. Um. Yeah. It was I would a, say maybe. Bottom of B. I'm it's definitely. Decent... I want to put it above the DSI. Okay. It's a decent system. It's it had a lot of good ideas, but I think it was a case of Sony thinking they could, you know, swing their dick in the portable market, not realizing that Nintendo like controls that with an iron fist. Well, it and did. No matter what. No, well, it did very well. It did very well, and at the time, a lot of people did think that this was going to you know, trounce all over the DS. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, time and uh, price and also the games that were available showed people that the DS was the better option than the PSP. Uh, could you watch Shrek on it? Is Shrek the third PSP? Oh, wait, this is a game? Oh, it's a game. Uh, list of UMD movies. Oh no, it is a UMD. It is a UMD. So you can watch Shrek. So it's okay. got that. All right. Yeah, people people are pissed about our our, our PSP. Listen, it it had a great screen and everything. It's just the game. Listen, yeah. the game's not even as good as Game Boy games, dude. Like, come on. But, but, I mean, we were also were JRPG guys. So if you're a JRPG guy, I'm sure yeah. you can find a lot of stuff on the PSP. And wait till we get to the Vita. Um, yes. <laughs> right now we're on the 3DS, I believe. Uh, correct. We are on the 3DS. So the original 3DS, not, uh, it was very expensive when it came out. And this is another, mm -hmm. this is another situation where the original 3DS, kind of a chunker, uh, yeah. not the best design. But uh, tons of great games on the on the 3DS. When it came out, it was very expensive, and there weren't that many good launch games. I remember Pilot Wings got bad reviews, but I loved that mm -hmm. game. I played the shit out of it. Um, I think I 100% of that game. 
I wasn't sold on 3D at all. I don't think 3D was was the strong point of this console at all. I turned that shit right off. Definitely, definitely not. To the point where they released a version of it that did not have 3D. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, it had... It was the DS, but better, and had a lot of great games. See, I'm struggling to think of a lot of games that were on the 3DS, like, truly great 3DS games, you know? Um, like, Well, now I have a list, so I feel like I'm cheating, but Super Mario 3D Land, uh, Animal Crossing New Land Leaf, was good. Uh, um, Mario Poke Kart 7, uh, Pokemon... Uh, what was it, black and... What was it, black and white DS? Black and white was DS. Black and white was DS. X and Y was 3DS. Black and white... Black and white was a lot of people's favorite uh, Pokemon game. So yeah. that goes for the DS, though. Uh, Metroid Samus Returns, which is very, like, new. Um, uh, it had a Mario Maker, which was the... Uh, not the good Mario Maker. <laughs> oh, it had Star Fox 64 the port yes. it had ocarina of time a port of that uh which a lot of people are i'm playing through ocarina of time right now will finally and a lot <laughs> of real people, this time a lot of people were trying to tell me to do the 3ds version but i didn't want to do it and I, I i played a decent amount of the 3ds version and i i couldn't get through it yeah i, I remember i played a decent amount of it too don't like it still it had monster hunter uh that was pretty good it it yeah. had virtual console which i think is it did have a virtual console, probably yeah. uh the most important and it had a lot of indie games you could download through uh mm -hmm. through the eShop. i had uh shovel knight on there uh so yeah i think it's i think it's a great console well okay where would you put it well it had virtual console so when I, well, now you're making me feel like it doesn't have that many good games <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just didn't spend as much time with the 3DS as I did with the original DS. It's also not so backwards I, compatible, right? It's backwards compatible with DS games, not okay. Game Boy games. Uh, you guys can't give 3DS points for having Virtual Console and Monster Hunter when the PSP did the same thing. PSP had Virtual Console. It had downloadable games, but it didn't have Virtual Console. You can play. You can get PS One games on it, but I mean, come on, PS One games compared to like NES and Game Boy games. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, I'll put it at the top of B. Okay, I think that's fair. Because it, yeah. it had a it had a good library of retro stuff, and it had a lot of great, you know, first party games. Um, yeah. So I th I, th I think it belongs to go right at, right on top of Game Boy. Okay. Uh, although um, the 3D not too great. Not so about the 3D. Bef before we go to the Vita, what do you want to do about the 2DS? Because that is basically the same system, just without the 3D. My problem with the 2DS. So 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 my problem with the 3DS is the 3D. The 3D was kind of useless. Could have used that for more power because it's rendering two images at once. Could have just rendered one right. image better. Um, didn't need 3D at all. 2DS solves that problem, however, adds another problem. It's a fucking wedge <laughs> and not as good as the clamshell design. They later made apparently, a clamshell, but... Uh, apparently, the 2DS is very comfortable. But people actually liked holding it. I want to put this below the Game Boys. Really? Yes. Although this is the Mario Maker version of the 2DS, so <laughs> I almost bought that. So the, so the thing about like the 3DS and the 2DS is eventually there was the new Nintendo 3DS mm -hmm. and the new Nintendo 2DS, mm -hmm. and by every by all accounts, everything I've ever seen, everybody agrees that the best version of this system is the new Nintendo 2DS XL. I would. That agree. is everybody's favorite version of the the 3DS line. It came out a little too late. It did. It came out like I think after the Switch came out. Yeah, because uh, I remember that came out and I was like, "What in the fuck? What are we doing here?" I thought we were behind. I thought we had this all behind us. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna put the 2DS behind the Game Boys. I think the two this the Wedge 2DS was a bad idea, but the but yeah. the better 2DS that came out later was a great idea. Uh, 
should I put it behind the PSP to appease people? <laughs> I mean, no, oh, it still had to, it still had DS games, so I can't I can't yeah. do that. Uh, all right, now we're on the Vita. Now we're on the Vita. The, we the like the Dreamcast Vita of handheld consoles. Yes, we like the Vita. Where we Vita shit on the PSP a lot. The Vita is great though. The Vita is what they should have gone with because the Vita hmm. solves pretty much all of the PSP's problems. It had media functionality, but it was an actual video game console. It it came on cartridges, and you can download the games to the system. Um, things ran better on the on the Vita. It had dual analog sticks, which helped out immensely. It had a had a full touch screen. It had a back touch, which actually was really useful for a lot of games. Um, it had, had an Joe OLED in it, which screen. was very helpful. OLED at the start. Um, it had great ports of a lot of great games. Um, I could see Mortal Kombat. That was a really, really good port of the console game. It had a lot of great unique games like Tearaway. Um, it was a great Uncharted indie game machine. It was a phenomenal indie machine. Uh, had games like you, Child it, of Light. Uh, uh, I played Super Meat Boy on it. There was a game called the, Titan Souls, which I loved on there. The first Sly Cooper game I ever played was Sly Cooper Thieves in Time on the PS Vita, and I loved it. It was fantastic. I be, I played the whole thing to the end. Uh, also, you were able to remote play onto your PlayStation 4, and yes. I, used, I used that uh, to play Destiny, and it was awesome. And, yeah, when it worked, it worked <laughs> really well. So the technology was here. This was great. Yes. Uh, the problem, like Will said before, it used proprietary memory cards. Uh, That's it. And Sony made memory cards specifically for the Vita in an attempt to curb piracy and things like that. The problem was the memory cards to this day are astronomically expensive. A comparable SD card was like a fraction of the price in terms of memory. Um, and Sony just would never budge. They only sold like a hand, like, a, like, I think four sizes of, uh, memory cards and they were all like really expensive. I think a 64 gig memory card was like a hundred dollars when a 64 gig SD card was like 25 bucks at the time. Yeah. Uh, so it had a lot of great games, which is something that the the, yeah. the PSP was 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 lacking. This was an indie and JRPG machine, and uh, I it, it did have a lot of good first party stuff um, that was developed specifically for this. Um, but a lot of people who didn't have a Vita saw it as a JRPG and uh, and indie game machine, and that's why they right. didn't get it because it did have a lot of good first party stuff, but didn't have enough. And the better it, the better uh, games in those franchises were still on PlayStation Three and PlayStation Four. So yeah. uh, a lot of I people think another didn't problem, get it. They they saw they saw better options elsewhere. I think another problem too was uh, Sony really tried to sell this as like um, console quality gaming on the go. They really tried to sell the um, the technology aspect of it, kind of like what they did with the PSP. But the problem was. Uh, people were finding out that was not sustainable people were not buying psps at the same the ps vitas at the same rate they were buying like ps3s and ps4s mm -hmm. and therefore the money needed to make those kind of games um just wasn't there meanwhile P there was a thriving indie scene on the vita that sony just did not pay attention to because that's not sexy that doesn't attract people the same way you know an uncharted looking game or a call of duty looking game does sony actually spent money to port borderlands 2 to the vita thinking that would help its sales and it didn't mm -hmm. meanwhile everybody who owned a vita had like an astronomical amount of indie games the attachment rate on games to the vita was really high like people owned a lot of games people who owned a vita owned a lot of games on the vita they just didn't own the game Sony wanted you to own on the Vita. Yeah, they wanted to. They were really going for the 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 triple A and 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 the the, the graphically sexy games. Uh, yeah. they, they also there was a lawsuit because they said that you could play every 
PlayStation 4 game on the Vita. PlayStation uh, 3 oh, game. Oh, every PlayStation 3 game on the Vita. Yeah. And it turned out remote play only worked with some PlayStation 3 games. Uh, but it worked with yeah. every PlayStation 4 game because you could just remote into the whole PlayStation 4 system. Um, but certain games had special controls on the Vita, like Destiny had its yeah, own yeah. set of controls. Um, so, yeah, if they marketed it more as a little indie machine, I feel like maybe it could have been a little better. Let, yeah. let us have games that are just really good, even if they're not graphically sexy. Yeah. That's what Nintendo does, and it works out what, for them. What's that, what's that quote? I want shorter games with worse graphics. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I love the Vita. Uh, maybe... Hmm, does it go above the 3DS is the question. I don't know. Oh, no, no. Does it go above... Yeah, the 3DS. Oh, we put the DS above the 3DS? Weird. Yes. Yeah, does it go above the 3DS? Um... You know? I think it does. I'm keeping it in I B. think it... Keeping it in B, but I think it does go above the 3DS. I think it is a better system with more interesting games on it i think it's a technically better system but i don't know if it has the better yeah. games i don't know if i would go that far i i equate it to the sega dreamcast of handheld systems it was a cult system <laughs> um with a lot of great games and a dedicated fan base the only difference is every dreamcast game is good the dreamcast has no bad games and the vita does have bad games that call of duty game is but do not play that game <laughs> The only game we have an A tier, uh, the only one we have an A tier is the DS. Yes. Everything, like, everything's in B. <laughs> the, the problem with handheld gaming is, like, you know, there are some good handhelds on there, and a lot, a lot of this stuff in B, I would say, are great. I, but I, like, there's always just something. Like, a, a yeah. handheld gaming just, it's not the same as console gaming. I, I think Console I'll, gaming is, like, an experience. I, I think I want to put the Vita, the 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 DS. I think I want to put the Vita, the 3DS, the Game Boy Color, and the Game Boy all in A tier. I want to shift them all up. Okay. Because the B B is too crowded, and I think that all of these are great, and the 2DS deserves a B. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving all these I just, up. I just think like handheld gaming. That's more of like a quick fix type deal. That's more of like. That's more of like a, an episode of a sitcom television show that you really like. You watch it, you enjoy it, and that's it. Whereas a console game, that's more like an actual movie where you sit there for a long time and you like watch it and you get absorbed in it type of deal. That's just the way I view handheld and console gaming. Um, that being said, there are some console games I enjoy like really quick, and there are some handheld games that I get absorbed in, but... You know, by and large, that's how I've always viewed handheld versus console gaming. You know, one's for like quick fix gaming, and and the others for like you know immersive, more immersive experiences. So, so I've always just liked to have the option to take stuff with me if I if I can. That's why I mm -hmm. love the Sega Nomad, the idea of a Sega Nomad, even though it came out a yeah. little too late. Having something like that, and that's why I was so excited about talking about that and being able to take it, take my home game wherever I want. And the last thing we have is the Nintendo Switch. Where do you think that goes? I mean, look, we put it in S tier last week. I think it was it deserves to go in S tier this week as well. It is the most perfect handheld console because it is also a home console. It's the same reason why I was in S tier on the home console thing because it's not yeah. just a home console. It's a it's a it's a portable console. If it can do both and um, do both extremely well, yeah, of course it's gonna get skyrocketed at the top. Also. It doesn't have virtual console, but it has a no. whole shit ton of retro games. And it has, yeah. this is the indie machine that the Vita should have been. Yeah. Um, it It's absolutely S tier. And the and the DS Lite is just the the more portable version. If the DS Lite was here, I would have put that above the regular. The Switch I'm, Lite. I'm a dummy. If the Switch Lite was on here, I would put that above the regular Switch for a handheld. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's Nintendo Switch. I, I don't know if I would call it the perfect system, but it is a perfect system. You know, it, it does everything you want it to do, and it does it so well. And mm -hmm. it has it has a game for you. 
yes it, it it's it's i mean i'm sure they'll they'll well i don't want to jinx it <laughs> The problem is Nintendo goes in waves and they'll release something that's awesome and then they'll release something that's dumb. And uh, yeah. I feel like the next thing, like like they have a lot that they could still improve on with the Switch. So it's not perfect. But the next mm-hmm. system that they release, the next console generation, has a potential to be really dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to say that the next, that they'll fix it and make it perfect eventually, but... um. Yeah, I think I think that of all of these, this is the closest we're gonna get to to something perfect. Yeah. People in the chat naming some 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 things that are obviously flaws with the with the Switch, like Nintendo Switch Online yeah. is awful. It has a terrible kickstand. Kick uh, how are those even like like worth a mention compared to yeah. all of the other handhelds with all of their flaws that are here? Yeah, the 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 online store of the PS Vita is one of the worst online stores I've ever used. Mm-hmm. It's awful. Doesn't doesn't mean it goes in a lower tier. Uh, yeah, the eShop is very slow and sometimes unresponsive. Uh, yeah, the kickstand sucks. But if you're playing in portable mode, you're probably not using the kickstand all and, that much. And none of these consoles have a kickstand. Yeah, <laughs> on this list, except I would argue the Virtual Boy. <laughs> so no, that's not relevant at all. Um, yeah. And Nintendo Switch Online, the online service being bad. Uh, the only other system on here with online is well, with any online that's worth even mentioning is the Vita, and uh, <laughs> that had good online. Yeah. But I mean, it's, I'm not gonna. It's it. It doesn't come close to the Switch just because it had good online. It it yeah. the games that you play online aren't worth playing online, except for the connectivity that it had with PlayStation Four and PlayStation Three. Um. Anyway, that's our list. Uh, talk shit about us in the comments below. Uh, about yeah. our stupid. D- don't opinions. hate us because we're right. As you all know, this is the definitive list for the entirety of the of 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 yeah. gamers. So if 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 you are if you played a video game before ever in your whole life, then this is the list that you also signed off on and agreed for. <laughs> yep, this is your list. This, this isn't just our list. This is the list for every for all uh, billion people who play games out there. We figured it out. We got it. We got it yeah, done for you. Don't worry about it. it. You don't have to worry, yep. little head. We we got it. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, these tier lists take a long time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got Jess the Vagabond with eleven months. Eleven months. Where did the time go? I don't know. I ask myself that every day. Yeah. EIP with six months. The 3DS was the first handheld I bought. I brought with my first paycheck, so it holds a special place in my heart. What was the first one that I bought with my first paycheck? I think mine was a PS2, and it was pre-owned from GameStop because it came with Metal Gear and Madden 2004. I'm talking about handheld. Oh, handheld. Might have been the Game Boy Color. No. I mean, we didn't, ha- we we didn't have a very young. We had the- yeah. Oh, what about the Game Boy Advance? No, we got that for Christmas. Okay. So it must have been the the DS. No, I got that from my birthday. <laughs> oh my god. Gamecom actually is the one because we got it in, oh, a, yeah. in a bargain bin at Toys R Us. Yeah. I remember buying the 3DS because I got it right when it came out and I spent all right. that freaking money, 250 bucks on it. Um anyway. Uh Kate McCat. With 100 bits. The fact that there is no Game Boy Advance SP make me sad. I know. That would have been uh, yeah. higher. That would have been... Uh, I S- know because I feel, I feel like that's a situation where the the flaws of the original Game Boy Advance are balanced out by the flaws of the, of the SP. Because there are flaws of the SP. I think the biggest it's- flaw is the screen. And I think that fixing that is is enough. Right, but the the form factor I think is not as good as the original 
uh, Game Boy Advance, and a lot of people would agree with me on that. I, th- I, uh, I think a lot of people would disagree. I think a lot of people want that clamshell. A lot of people want that clamshell, but just as many people want the, you know, the the original form factor. I because the clamshell version it gets cramped. I also like the original form factor. However, I would trade all of that for that screen. The screen is True. definitely worth it, and rechargeable batteries. Yes. Uh, night light with a hundred bits. Hey, Wolf Bros, much love. Hope you all have a great night. Just wanted to say, never got a PSP or a Vita before, but I've always been interested in it. Mom and Dad were more into Nintendo consoles, so I got a DS instead. Hopefully one day I can find either one for a good price online or in a local shop. Lots of good games on them too as well. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, it's, I feel like every time I'm like at a retro store and I like see something I want, uh, mm. it's, I look online and I you should just go online. If you want something, just get it online. It's so much easier. I mean, you don't have the 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 privilege of like looking at it and seeing if it's like in good yeah. condition or whatever. But uh, there's some great deals online that are better than when you go to the store. Yeah, for most of the time, you just have to look. The problem with seeing it in in a store or at a convention or whatnot is like you have the that instant gratification. You see it and mm-hmm. you can get it right then and there. Whereas online, you're tempted. To, excuse me, you're tempted to like stop think do your research and waffle on whether or not you actually want to get it whereas seeing it in store like you instantly want to get it because you can like see it right there i got know? i got a ds light online for like really cheap and uh yeah. i got it on ebay and it was freaking awesome it's a little it's got some dings on it but it's it's so yeah. it's great uh jay cannon with 300 bits did you tell will about the coffee i tweeted you about what what coffee the local coffee that's local to you he wanted to send us coffee and i said no i don't like people sending consumable things <laughs> I'm, I'm weirded out by that um all right next let's plow through some actual news yeah yeah tableau okay. from Ken- oh it's from kentucky that's why okay all right uh i'm not opposed to kentucky coffee uh all right let's oh i forgot about this is this is a big topic we gotta probably spend a little time on uh this is uh the steam deck oh yes everybody Uh, got their hands on on the steam deck i haven't watched us i haven't watched any of these uh so i don't know i should have watched these I, i saw a couple of them and i like i read a couple of the reviews and stuff it's it's all basically the same i thought this guy um, was playing the witcher oh he is he's playing the witcher on it it yeah. just switched from it switched from the witcher on the oh no wait, that's a switch yeah he's showing you the witcher on a switch in aya neo and okay. on the steam deck oh so he does show it on the steam deck okay yeah. I'm, i i'm not listening with audio so i'm very confused yeah okay it is fucking huge yeah, it is massive. That is a big a boy. Yeah. All right. Um, let's, what do we? Well, let's let's try to like summarize this article here a little bit. Yeah. I mean, basically, what everybody is saying <clears throat> is saying from all the from all the stuff I was reading is that um, it works. It works really well. <laughs> it, it feels good in the hands, uh, despite like. The fact that these are pre-production units that they're using. Um, the games run fairly smoothly. Uh, the gyro works very well. Um, you can instantly go back and forth from the touch pads to the uh, analog sticks seamlessly and with without having to like do any settings on it. Um, the back buttons are customized. Pretty much the whole system is customizable in terms of button layout. But in particular, you have um, four back buttons that you can assign to whatever you want. I, um, you I, can you can use that USB C port to attach it to a monitor or use other accessories like a mouse and keyboard if you really want to. Oh, it looks like they're comparing the uh, the one with the glass screen with the one with the plastic screen. Yes, 
they had um they had a display out at the media event, one with the glass screen, one with um the other type of screen, and it was you can see the difference between the glare. Yes. Yeah, it, it looks like that there's there's an obvious glare on one of them. Uh yeah. I mean, still I don't think it's worth spending all that extra money. Uh Yeah, I mean I I, I they also Valve also said that they released a statement that said something like it's idiot proof. We we've made it for for new <laughs> PC users who uh, might not want to tinker around, which I think is great news because yeah. that was one of my yes. concerns was that this is going to be a huge pain in the ass to try to figure out what to do with it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think this looks great. The, the looking at this B roll, um, yeah, and it looks like it runs a lot of games pretty good, like a lot of the, the games that people would want to play on it. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't let they they wouldn't let um the reviewers like do pretty much everything. One thing they w they wouldn't let them do is because apparently you can swap out the SSD mm -hmm. in these things, um, but Valve would not let anybody open them up to like see it and show you how to do it. So that yeah. was off limits. These are um, pre-production units, so that would be weird to yeah. look at the inside. They also. You know? They were very selective of like what games they could and could not play. Like they had to ask. I saw on Linus Tech Tips uh, preview of it. He had to ask for permi permission to download uh, CS:GO in order to because that's very good at like showing high frame rate. Interesting. So he had to ask permission to download a Valve game onto a Valve device. <laughs> I can't imagine playing CS:GO on this thing. That's that you need. A, you need a mouse. Oh god, it. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can plug a mouse into it. That's, It'll work. That is true. But uh, why did we get a portable system then? Uh yeah, this thing uh is th this thing is barely portable. <laughs> um but I mean it looks like it runs things pretty good. I mean I have I I think this thing is going to uh do things well. I just I think everybody hold on to your switches. I don't think we're gonna be throwing yeah. those out anytime soon. This this is clearly going for two different markets. The switch is the Toyota Camry, and this is you know a, a Bugatti. No, there this is this is a more... Porsche truck. <laughs> it's a Porsche truck. That's better. That's what better it example. is. There are a lot more. The Toyota Camry is the best selling car in the world. A Porsche truck. You don't see a lot of Porsche trucks out on the <laughs> out in the world. And the ones you do, probably some rich asshole drives it. Yeah. So. So so, yeah. I I again, I'm not gonna understand this thing until I get my hands on it. Uh, it looks yeah. like the emulation, or I'm sorry, it's not emulation. To it, it the the way that it runs the games through it's linux operating system it seems like it's doing yeah. a good job um but yeah i'd like to see what it's like when i get it in my lap and i get it set up with my steam account and i play my own games on it i'd like to see what I did, happens i did see somewhere that valve is working with amd to try and get windows 11 to work on this so mm -hmm. if they can pull that off i think it would open it up to a much wider audience I mean, it's still going to be a narrow audience because the thing's fucking expensive, but a much wider audience than uh, initially possible. Because I know a lot of gamers will only play on Windows. Val was up front that it's definitely still working out some software bugs like the occasional freeze or, or how Prey suddenly decided I was going to have a mouse cursor atop my screen in the middle of the game. He probably like bumped the trackpad with his thumb or something. Yeah, yeah Valve is working with AMD to make the Steam Deck Windows 11 ready. Okay. Oh, and a lot of these games, uh, I think IGN played all of their games off of the micro SD card, which is interesting. I heard that from yes, somewhere. I've, I've, I've heard that actually works really, really well, considering. Interesting. Uh, I'm interested to see that because then this really is just a $400 console because uh, the $400 console only has, what, 64 gigs? And that's not enough for... for yeah. uh, for pc games at all uh but yeah. if you can run all of your games off of a micro sd card then you can freaking get the cheap one uh yeah. not, not a problem uh but i it, it's looking good 
it's looking good so far. Again, I don't think this is going to be like a mainstream situation. Uh, no. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to know anything until like uh, until I get my hands on it. Uh, I'm still yeah. I'm still very uh, 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 skeptical about how it's going to run most games through its Linux operating system. Yeah. Um, I'm I still don't know how it's going to pull it off. I I think it'll. I think its audience is going to be there and will, you know, enjoy it and love it. But I don't think that audience is big enough to see this last an entire console generation. Right. That's 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 just where I'm at because I, like aside from the index, Valve's hardware doesn't really last very long. Right. Uh, so it'll be out in December. So in December, I will get it in my lap and I will do my best to see what I can do out of it. Uh, anyway, what's next here? Uh, next, a rare Super Mario Brothers copy sells for $2 million. Back on this bullshit. Oh, God. So this is another situation where it's like a weird sort of, uh, uh, like like investment sort of like pump and dump like weird money laundering yeah. thing this is another ver situation like that oh so the, this beats out the 1.56 million dollar sale of super mario 64 which was also definitely a money laundering scheme yeah uh an anonymous buyer purchased the collectible from rally which has which had sold shares in the copy of the game to investors, and that that's what makes it weird. There you have it. Yeah, the uh, the buyer of Super Mario Brothers offered two million dollars for the copy, which is factory sealed, professionally graded, and part of a limited print run. And the sale was approved by shareholders in the NES game. That's Rally's business. Investors can purchase shares of expensive collectibles like vintage baseball cards, comic books, cars, and dinosaur skulls <laughs> instead of buying them outright. Let me read that list again. Vintage baseball cards, comic books, cars, and dinosaur skulls. How do I own a piece of a dinosaur skull and then how do I claim that piece? <laughs> this is a platform for super villains. Yes. Who else owns a dinosaur skull? <laughs> In the chat, tell me if you own a dinosaur skull. Collectibles that sell at a high price through Rally can result in a return on investment for shareholders. In this case, investors reportedly received a roughly 900% return on their shares. Wow. Jesus Christ. The $2 million sale of Super Mario Bros. breaks the previous record for a video game collectible, a 1.56 1 million dollar copy of Super Mario 64 that sold through Heritage Auctions in July. That sale broke the prior record holder ne nearly twice over a game cartridge of the legend of zelda sold for 870 dollars at auction earlier in july is this the fucking version that has uh, is this the test market version of the original super mario brothers because the super mario 64 that sold for an insane amount was like uh, was like a 9.8 or something ridiculous it was like really highly graded yeah. But it, there was nothing different about it. It was just Super Mario yeah. 64. Th uh, the, the the previous that, Super Mario Brothers that sold for a lot of money, I think it was only like $100,000, though. That was the test market that was sealed with the little sticker. If This better be one of those. Despite there, that there are more than 40 million copies of Super Mario Brothers for the NES and Famicom out in the market, a sealed highly graded copy of a widely available game can obviously go for big bucks based on how price trends are going today's sale is nearly three times what a similar but slightly lower graded copy of super mario brothers went for in april of 2021 Ex expect prices to inflate further so i think i don't think this is the test market version i think this is just the copy of the game that is in immaculate condition I fucking hate this world. Yeah. I typed in test I, and finder and then I came up. I, That's so dumb. Yeah. I think it's just because it's a high quality 
copy, not because it's a rare, like it's from a limited run or anything. And and you can just, you can just, like like you, it it's you're buying a share in this. Yeah. So nobody actually owns this. So you're just like so you they, it could just be anything. They could they could have a rock in there. Yeah. No one's actually gonna touch it. Who owns the share? Yeah. Because it's 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 sealed in like a vacuum sealed case. So it could very well just be a rock. I have like five You're not copies know. of this of this game, like physically. So yeah. one of them's got to be a nine, right? <laughs> I know with video game collectibles, like there are ranges. Like obviously, the the condition of the the piece matters. Whether you have all the accessories matters. Whether it's complete in box or not matters. Um, but two million dollars is ridiculous yes it's ridiculous for our super mario brothers the most common game on the nes and the pro like i said last time the problem with this is this is going to drive the price up for not just super mario brothers but all nes games which were starting to trend down in recent years finally because now people are going to see oh i have this game i can sell this for like a hundred dollars and it's like, what what other games do I have from this era that I can also sell for a hundred dollars? Uh, yeah, it's this is uh this is very dumb. Yeah, we're we're old, Will. We're at the time now where uh, people our age with the same interests as uh, as us now have uh, money to throw around, yeah. and and uh, can start their own uh, schemes. And look, I get it. I'm old. I I understand that there's a collectible market out there and things gain value and lose value. At Eternal Con, I bought a comic for 25 bucks and its original retail price was $3. And this is only from like five or six years ago. I get it. I get this stuff happens. But that comic, I know like it was a rare comic. It was never reprinted. It was never collected in a trade. It's only ever really been found like on Comicsology, and that's it. And it was a significant issue in that particular run. But you know, I don't. You know, I just listed all the reasons why it's it's an uncommon comic. Super Mario Brothers is the most common video game on the NES, <laughs> boxed or otherwise. Yeah, this is uh, this is getting out of control. Yeah, the FCC is going to need to step in for these. Uh crazy big auctions because something's up what can they do though i think there's something they could do about uh uh these sh buying a share of a physical item yeah like somebody's got to step in and appraise that item but like, there's no way this thing's worth that doesn't make no. any sense anyway uh we got to move on here uh, yeah. Shank uh, Potamus, thank you for the Prime subscription. Um, next, we have Switch outsells P PS3 and Xbox 360 sales. The Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch has shipped more than 89 million units, helping it pass both the 360 and the PS3 to become the seventh biggest game console of all time. Whoa. Um, the 360 sold... 86 million units worldwide and the ps3 sold 87.4 million units worldwide and at at this rate the the switch is on track to become nintendo's best-selling system ever hello by next year i touched my mic and i i broke it oh. um this time next year so the yeah. Wii, the Wii is Nintendo's most successful system. Yes. Okay. You know, I had. You know, I said before the Switch came out, it had potential mm -hmm. to do Wii numbers. None of you has believed me. It's, it's doing it. <laughs> it's doing it. Yeah. How long did it take for the Wii to hit? Uh, 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 like, it's. To, how long did it take for the Wii to? get to uh uh it nintendo's best-selling console oh i don't i don't know because i mean four years four years is a pretty long time 
Yeah. The, 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 th the thing that's crazy about the Wii is that uh, it was in, like, old folks' homes and stuff, and, yeah. and, and it, it had a w wider audience than just normal gamers. Like, like uh, anybody was, a, was picking up a Wii and playing it. It, 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 it had a w super wide audience. It was in, like, every single household. But the Switch... You buy one for each kid, so yeah. That that's uh, they the Switch doesn't have the killer apps that the Wii did. Like the Wii had Wii Sports, which made it like even our parents tried out Wii Sports. Yeah. Um, it had Wii Fit, which is which was big. It uh, big in old people too. Um, mm. the the Switch doesn't have that those sorts of killer apps, uh, but it makes up for it. In the fact that it's portable and that you buy it for multiple people yeah um you don't really like share a switch anyway I'm trying to look up like the sales trajectory of the wii and i can't really find anything uh game, game charts video game charts uh, i get yelled at that this website isn't that accurate but uh i don't care uh by 2016, it had sold over 100. Actually, no. By 2013, it had sold over 100,000 units. Here's a so here's a list of total sales in Europe uh, with the Switch right next to the Wii, and uh, it looks like they're like neck and neck. Yeah. What's that bottom part? Months? It's probably months. Uh, months and then and then sales yeah it looks like the wii was uh, it had a higher higher trajectory but but the if the switch keeps it steady yeah it'll, it'll pass it but when was this this was uh six hours ago <laughs> posted six hours ago so the wii hit 100 million units worldwide in 2013 that's that's six years after that's that's six that's within a six years of life. Mm -hmm. So the switch the switch launched when in 2017. Yep. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So in five years, in one in one less year, it'll hit the same amount of units sold. Right. Damn. Well, there all right. Go. Then. All right. Uh, Fire Blast. Thanks for the Prime subscription. Next, we have uh, what we wanted to talk about last week, but then never did. Yeah, Pokemon Go ends its pandemic gameplay bonuses. Oh, oh no! How could you do such a thing? Uh, Pokemon Go developer Niantic rolled out uh, plan changes to its mobile game over the weekend, reverting gameplay bonuses that were implemented in 2020 to accommodate social distancing and quarantine as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. But as COVID infections and death rates rise in the U.S. because everything sucks, one of the one of the territories where Pokemon Go's pandemic-related changes are being undone, some players are questioning the timing. Some are vowing to quit the game or stop spending money until Niantic goes back to the way things were. Last year, Niantic made it easier for players to reach uh, Pokestops and gyms from farther away. That change made it more convenient for players to spend more stops sometimes from the comfort of home, in order to earn Pokeballs, gifts, and other items. An update to Pokemon Go in some territories has since cut the distance in half, meaning stops and gyms are less accessible. Uh, one other recent change doubles down on, on the push for more exploration. A current bonus in Pokemon Go offers 10 times the experience earned for spending a Pokestop that players haven't previously visited. Niantic is incentivizing players to play up more Pokemon Go outdoors and in new places, other changes reduce the number of gifts which which players can send to each other to receive in-game items brought to players by Buddy Pokemon. It's one more way Niantic is pushing players to get out and play again. Uh, so... Then we have a tweet from Joe Merrick who says, I'm just going to put this out there. I'm not going to be putting any money into Pokemon Go for the foreseeable future. Niantic have taken a dangerous decision with the Pokestop distance removal during a worsening pandemic. A uh, feature that helped people play safely or just play. 
I love playing Pokemon Go and really enjoy my time with it when I'm able to go outside and play with friends and it helps me fill my living shiny Pokedex in home. But this disregard for the user base is so bad. I recommend you do the same until Niantic reconsiders this instantly. So it's, I feel like it's a hard decision to make for Niantic because the whole premise of Pokemon Go is to go outside and enjoy yourself and, and be out yeah. in the world. Uh, the pandemic forced them to make a change uh, that changed the way that Pokemon Go works. It changes the whole idea of the game. I yeah. feel like there is no going back. Once you change how you play Pokemon Go, I feel like there's nothing you can do. I feel I feel like going back, you're taking away a feature that you just gave everybody. Yeah, I'm not even and talking it, about like the safety of players. Like I like just don't play the game. Then <laughs> like it's not like yeah. if you don't want to go outside, don't play the game. It's really not a hard decision. It it, it your life is more important, and your and your well being is more important than this fucking stupid game. But yeah. uh. In terms of gameplay and, and and user experience, you just gave the users a cool new feature that made the game easier for them, and now you're ripping it out of their hands after a year. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. So, I, and it, it's... it's They couldn't have been done at, like, a worse time, too, with everything getting worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, David Brown, thanks for the two months. All right, so uh, there you go. If you play, po I I do want to play Pokemon Go. I fucking love Pokemon Go. I got. I haven't played in a very long time. I haven't either. I gotta bust it out and see what happens. See what's up. Yeah. Uh, a little side note: I put in a request on Alibaba. I have never done this before. I put in a request for a custom printed desk mat for like a mouse pad. Okay. <laughs> for one supplier i have gotten like 10 emails <laughs> like during this really? podcast yeah i i like wow. like fuck off guys <laughs> <laughs> like jesus christ what did they all know do they all talk to each other like how do they all know they you must it they can't must be get one, the one request i mean i'm sure like you got you got put into a pool and they just sent your email out to anybody who makes custom mouse pads oh that's so annoying Anyway, uh, I'm probably not going to use Alibaba. That's that's for damn sure. Um, anyway, Idris Elba is Knuckles. Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, never I did not expect this at all. This is, I mean, you talk about left field casting. This, this is totally nuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, look, Idris Elba could play Mother Teresa in a movie, and I would not question it <laughs> at all. So I, I did not have a problem with Idris Elba playing Knuckles. It's just that Idris Elba is on, on a very different level than the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this either is... they are shelling out either they are shelling out all the money to get him, or he really likes Sonic the Hedgehog. He's like, I want to be in this. <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh this is this is this is like the uh, the best person they could have got probably yeah uh this is this is very good i think this movie's gonna be great i, I when 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 the first sonic movie ended i was like that was a good sonic movie but the next one they set it up so well for a sequel they did i, I think this next one's gonna be much much better and i hope they take some liberties too and they, they make their own thing with it yeah uh, my question is though, is he going to keep his accent, or is he going to try and do like an American accent? I hope he doesn't. I hope he sounds exactly like Idris Elba. I don't know. I mean, in my head, I have a voice for Knuckles, but I know that it's not going to sound anything like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what else? We also have. Oh, we know some. The first detail about the Super Mario movie has has leaked, and I watched this bit of the podcast where this was leaked. Uh, it, of yeah. all things, it was leaked on a Burt Kreischer po podcast. Yeah. Um, so our parents' favorite comedian, Sebastian Maniscalco, has <laughs> revealed that he has a small role in Illumination's upcoming Super Mario Brothers movie. And people are speculating that it signals a return from an old and relatively minor Nintendo character. 
Um, as a guest on the August 5th episode of the Burt Cast, a podcast hosted by fellow comedian Burt Chrysler, uh, Chrysler Maniscalco has uh, Maniscalco was asked about his plans for the rest of the day, and he replied thusly, I'm in a movie, Super Mario Brothers, an animated movie. I'm playing Spike, their boss. So I'm going to do that at 12. Now, who is Spike, you may ask? Well, as epodge 2 l on Twitter was quick to point out, Foreman Spike starred in Wrecking Crew alongside the Mario Brothers, so it's likely this who Maniscalco is referring to. And there, and that's him. That's Foreman Spike from Wrecking Crew. I have never heard of this character before. Me neither. I've heard of Wrecking Crew. I've played Wrecking Crew. I didn't know there were a lot more characters in that game other than Mario and Luigi. And it's barely Mario and Luigi. I didn't even know Luigi was in it, to be honest. Because he's not wearing green. <laughs> what the hell is he wearing? It, I think it's literally the same thing as Mario, but they, I think they retroactively called him Mario and Luigi. So, uh, it sounds like it's going to be a very small role because uh, I watched that chunk of the podcast and Sebastian Mouskalko goes on to say his the whole rest of his day and he had like a full packed day and I think he's only going to be like voice actor for like two hours. So, yeah. uh, it, it can't possibly be a, a, that big of a role. Unless, I mean, unless he's doing multiple days, but I, I doubt that. Maybe. I don't know. I Yeah, I don't imagine this will be more than like two, three days of work. Mm-hmm. Like he do, he like reads like the two pages he's on and maybe like comes back to like do additional pickup dialogue or whatnot. Yeah, so uh, I expect this to be like an origin story type deal or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool that they're referencing Wrecking Crew. Everybody forgets that that's a Mario game. Yeah. I also forget that it's a Mario game. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, and hey, maybe this will get our parents to watch it. <laughs> yeah, for the two seconds, Sebastian Mouse Gal Yeah. Uh, uh, all uh, right. Real quick, last couple things. PAX Australia is canceled. Boohoo. Yes, they're gonna plan on doing some sort of online event, but PAX Australia 2021 has been canceled due to ongoing concerns about new outbreaks of COVID-19 in Australia. PAX team has stressed it was initially optimistic the expo would be able to take place in October, but has now conceded an event is no longer possible. Uh, Ticket purchasers can get a full refund uh, within the next seven days. Oh, sorry. Refund information will arrive within the next seven days. How could it be? uh, How could the coronavirus be so bad in Australia when it's doing just fine in New Zealand? Isn't it the same country? No. Two different countries, two different governments, two different ways of uh, leading the people. No, I refuse to believe that. Apparently, like I follow um, Tom Taylor, the guy who writes the Nightwing comic on Twitter. He's Australian, and he, he tweets a lot about how messed up it is down there. Uh, in terms of what? In terms of like handling the pandemic. Ah, I feel that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh... All Aussies, they're just like us. Uh, anyway, David Brown, did I say thank you for the two months? Well, thank you for the two months. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, conventions are kind of a bad di- idea right now, even though me and Will both yeah. just went to a convention this weekend. Yep. Kept my mask on the whole time, hand sanitizer as much as I could. So so, uh, so the one that I went to, uh, it was Play New York City, required proof of vaccination, and you had to wear a mask. So you, uh, double. Et- Eternal Con didn't do that. You just had to. You just went in. Yeah, because because of Long Island. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, no way. I was gonna, I was gonna take my mask off <laughs> during that. Con- conventions are like disease place, disease petri dishes in the, the best of times. The first, the f- like when I s- first started going to conventions, I would get sick every time I came home from a convention. Yeah, and then I, then I. uh I learned the tricks, the convention tricks, which yeah. is uh, wash your hands all the time. This is this is pre-pandemic. The tricks I learned: wash your hands all the time, drink a shit ton of water. Yes, go, very important. Go, don't get there early. <laughs> just <laughs> just sleep a normal amount, and uh, that's it. It's really mm-hmm. just it's it, just drink, eat, and wash your hands. That's it. 
and then you'll yeah. have a, then you'll then you won't get sick or at least I, that's how it worked for me uh but uh now there's a whole ass coronavirus things are a little different yeah um anyway uh next uh so this is not gaming news but every gaming website was reporting on it so i figured throw it in here a uh, funimation has acquired crunchyroll <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, so, Sony acquired Funimation. Yes. Wait, this is uh, huge news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sony Pictures Entertainment and AT&T today announced that Sony has completed its acquisition of AT&T's Crunchyroll anime business through the Funimation Global Group LLC. Funimation is a joint venture between Sony Pictures and Sony Music Entertainment Japan, subsidiary Aniplex Inc. The agreement was first announced in December of 2020. Put so Funimation, basically, shove Funimation into Crunchyroll, and we're good, baby. So basically, there will be only one place to get your anime, not two. Um, Thank is this God. a good thing? I don't know. I I think it's a good thing uh, to merge the two. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing that Sony owns Crunchyroll. Uh, I mean, AT and T yeah. owned it before, so that couldn't have been any better. Um, but. I used to bounce between all of these different anime services, and now I just stick with Crunchyroll, but it, putting Funimation in there makes things less confusing. So uh, hopefully they roll it all in together. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm down. Last mm -hmm. news, Xbox has night mode. Yay. Yeah. Uh, Xbox is adding a bunch of um, new features like the night mode that dims your screen controller and power button. Oh, and, is and, they, and they have a blue light filter. Yes. Uh, it's a new night mode. The software giant has started testing this night mode uh, with Xbox Insiders, uh, and it allows owners to dim their screens, controller, LED brightness, and even the Xbox power button. Um, more customization includes different dimming levels and an optional blue light filter. Microsoft is also allowing Xbox owners to dim the LED brightness on their controllers in this night mode and dim the power button light or to even turn it off you can also set an xbox to switch the system to dark mode and disable hdr while the night mode is enabled he's testing this on an xbox one x nice <laughs> um uh, this, this this is good for people who like are in bed with the tv with somebody else and they don't want to yeah. distract them yeah if i had my xbox in the bedroom tv i would totally be using this so that i can play and not bother my wife being but able I also to being able to also dim yell a lot. <laughs> yeah, you yell in your sleep. Being able yeah. to dim the uh the Xbox icon. That is definitely just yeah. to not distract other people. Yeah. Uh so that's cool. The more features the better. Yeah. Whatever, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's only me in here and I play at my at my desk, so uh <laughs> whatever. Does don't, don't matter to me. Yeah. Uh that's all the news. We finally That's did it. it. Yay. Yay. All right. But Get there's... that tweet of the week up here. Okay. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Here it is, boys. Uh, tweet of the week. We got this one by Puny Jersey that says, Say peace to the drugs. Say no to yes. I've seen this. This it's is funny. It's one of those... Uh, what would you call it? Um, don't open dead inside. Yeah. Don't dead open inside. It's one of those situations, but it's. I, I see this a lot on Instagram, and it's always followed by like the people who are confused by like what they're saying. Wait, this one doesn't make any sense, no matter which way you look at it. <laughs> I know. That's what makes it funny. Oh, I get it. Like, no, I don't yeah. get it. I don't get. No, this doesn't make any sense. I'll see if I can find. It's like like things like this. It's always followed by like a picture of people arguing over how to properly pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And if and for this one, it's always just like the buffering logo. On face. <laughs> Pretty sure it's shopped. What is the right? What is the original though? I mean, I imagine it's supposed to say "say no to drugs, say yes to pizza." Yes. Okay. So those two are just. Flipped. <laughs> okay that's so <laughs> it's so fucking stupid all right uh, now we'll talk to you guys very briefly uh yes this is the part of the show where we answer 
all the comments from last week's Wolf Den Podcast over from our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Um, and anybody watching at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. We talk, we're on last week's Wolf Den Live where we did a, a tier, the definitive tier list of every console uh yes. that is that is indisputable nobody can do, nobody can say otherwise or else you're not a gamer yeah do not question us we got ian quinn who says nothing beats cooking rice in a rice cooker with gyoza on top and steam tray <laughs> then you finish the gyoza <laughs> off in an air fryer for the perfect level of outer crisp that's the type of content you came here for, boys. Yes. I don't have gyoza. And Ian, tell me the rice cooker you have. I need a rice cooker. <laughs> That's the information I, I need in my life. I can t I'll look up what kind of rice cooker I have, and I'll tell you. All right, thank you. Uh, and what type of gyoza are we getting? Frozen gyoza thrown in a friggin' air fryer? I'm not getting an air fryer. I'll give it a will. He'll air fry it for me while I'm making my <laughs> my rice at home. Yeah, I'll, I'll mail it back to you. Media in Mountains says, unless you are in your 40s, you are just not you are not credible to talk about console history or rating them unless you actually own and play them all. But you don't. I own an Intellivision. You do. <laughs> my father, my father-in-law actually gave me his twenty-six hundred and his Intellivision. I have both of them. Oh. So, <laughs> for the podcast listeners, I'm giving Media and Mountains the middle finger. Um, like I said, that was the definitive list for all gamers. It wasn't just yeah. our list; it was the list for every gamer on the planet. So yeah y you must be wrong because yes because we we did it for everybody so uh anyway seven says i got a crt last week well actually hold on i want to read sheepish lord of chaos says gyoza i barely knows her <laughs> seven Good says one. i got a crt last week and had a great time playing nfsu2 need for a speed underground 2 on the playstation yes. 2 slim my dad got me for christmas 2006 took me right back to being an awkward teenager ignoring my homework to play video games that was best times ignoring your homework to play video games now i just ignore taking care of my child to play video games yeah yeah child abuse <laughs> <laughs> Um, Need for Speed Underground 2 uh, What was that Where was that in the burnout timeline I mean that was before That was when burnout and Need for Speed were two separate things mm -hmm. Still So that was still EA's like house uh, Team making Need for Speed And Criterion I don't uh, I don't know if that might have been In between Burnout 3 and Burnout Revenge Okay. I'm not sure. Ms. H says, Will, you might need to go see a doctor to check to see if you have a kidney stone. Why? I definitely don't have a kidney stone because it doesn't hurt when I pee. What was uh, the what, believe, what was your ailment last week? I had like a lot of like weird back pain last week. Oh, that is that is a, a symptom of a kidney issue or something. Is I don't know. I'm I'm just old, dude. You're just old, it happens. Uh yeah. Sean Diggs PS4 is undoubtedly S tier. Nintendo bias is absurd. We only just mostly talk about Nintendo stuff here. <laughs> yeah. Uh Bob saying PS4 is B tier is criminal. Those 16-bit and antiques have nothing on the PS4 or 360. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. I thought oh. the 360 was 360 was my favorite console like right after the 360 was over yeah uh i also like to remind you the first system we put in s tier was the playstation 2 <laughs> also the nintendo switch is s tier on both lists how could nostalgia be 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 yeah we like nintendo consoles dude I, th this made yeah. me this made me this was the inspiration for my tweet i'm sorry i'm biased towards things that are good <laughs> and i'm biased against things that suck yeah. So I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, 
uh, Parker Rosick. PS5, why? How? Are you so bad at everything? I don't know what that means. I was going to say the PS5 is really the inspiration for that tweet because the PlayStation 5... I'm sorry that I'm biased against the PlayStation 5. Everything about it is fucking annoying. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm biased it against it because it's not as good. It just sounds like a poorly thought out system. Mm -hmm. And Melon, be sure to wash your rice. Thank you, Melon. Yes. Thank you for that. Always wash your, pro your produce before you cook it. Thank you for that public service announcement. Uh, anyway, now we'll talk to you very briefly because we are so late this time. Yes. Make it good. Uh, Medicenter, get ready, boys. One of the, one of us WN, uh, New Yorkers is talking, is taking over the state. Wings and beef on... What the fuck are you on, Medicenter? <laughs> yeah, I... I don't know what the hell you just said. Are you okay, dude? Uh, Bob looks sick to slick today or sick today. I can't tell if I'm looking jaundice because uh, I I don't know what it is. I think this light might make me might jaundice me. No, I still look jaundice. Uh, Mecha Dragon, ten bits. Got to say this, but I I bet will stop making videos so he can make coffee talk the second half of Wolfton. Why yeah. would I make the coffee channel when my version of coffee is getting the 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 Costco version the Costco sized Dunkin Donuts grounds and doing pour over very badly. You know, speaking of Costco, Benny the clips editor sent me a picture today of uh mm -hmm. of a friggin' fifteen hundred dollar computer in Costco. It was a Dell computer that had a thir uh, thirty sixty in it, which is like a uh -huh. graphics cards are really hard to get right now. So like that's yeah. a good deal. <laughs> yeah. So I might just go to Costco and just pick up a PC. There you go. Uh, I meant Bob. Stay tuned for Coffee Talk. Uh, maybe I'll just do a coffee podcast. Maybe just fuck it. Maybe there we'll just go. start a coffee podcast. Um, you can invite me on for the episode of uh, Shitty Coffee. <laughs> with <laughs> You know Guy Fieri has his own Keurig pods? That doesn't surprise me. Does it taste like barbecue sauce? If not, <laughs> I don't want to try it. Uh, oh, only if it tastes like barbecue. Only if it tastes like barbecue sauce. Uh... Hey, Will, I never finished Arrow, but I am thinking of going back. Should I or should I just ignore it? I don't know. I have I never got into Arrow or most of the CW shows. By the time I would think about trying it, I, it was too late because there were already like a thousand episodes and they were like ass deep and like all this weird continuity crossovers. So if you liked it in the beginning, like maybe give it another shot. But that's that's just where I'm at with CW shows. Uh, underscore said, you see his new hot dog apple pie thing? What? Yes, I did see that. I did not. I need to see this right I now. I did oh see my that. God. You know those like McDonald's apple pies? He put a hot dog in it. Uh, I, you know, I was on board until I saw the picture. There's fucking mustard <laughs> on top. Get that shit off of there. It would be so good I without the mustard. I'd be all over that without the mustard. <laughs> but the mustard, get that out of my face. <clears throat> you need a two... Th oh, wait. Oh, this is how to make it. Oh, so you can just not put it... But do you buy... Yeah. I think it says... This says decades old commercial jingles put to... Wait, what? <laughs> I thought this was being sold. It looks like no, he just made it. No, he's showing you how to make it, yeah. Apple Pie Hot Dog will make its debut at the Field of Dreams MLB game. All right, and then so you, you, and then go you click on it, and, and the title is different. Oh, it, and it's just in time for and in the spirit of Thursday's MLB Field of Dreams game. More on this later in Dyersville, Iowa. It's where the Oscar nominated 1989 movie Field of Dreams was filmed. Okay, so if I'm going to make this. I'm just not putting mustard on it, but uh, yeah. 
I guess tell them to hold the mustard if you're going to this MLB game for whatever reason. Otherwise, I'm down, dude. I'm down for that. Yeah. Oh my god, what? Wait, <laughs> this is the mock-up and this is what it actually looked like? Get out of here. Those bacon bits are a travesty. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, all right. uh, Crispy X, I mean, Wisconsin has a burger with a Krispy Kreme donut as the bun. I did that. I yes. made that. Uh, you ha You did? <laughs> No, I lied. I made an egg sandwich in. A, no, wait. I I made so it wasn't a Krispy Kreme donut. Mm -hmm. I made a burger inside of a Dunkin' Donuts donut, like way back in the day, and it was good. Yeah. Uh, I did. I recently took uh like a fancy donut from a local place and put it in an egg sandwich, and that was also pretty good. Nice. Uh, so I'll be getting tested for diabetes. Uh, guys, I think we're done. We gotta leave. Thank you for hanging All out, right, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of the show up over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, so you can watch us on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf den podcast and your preferred podcast service choice but no matter where you get this show from please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all respective platforms oh yay guys uh i'll be on hopefully tomorrow uh i got a lot to do though so who knows uh i'll definitely be on thursday i have to do something on thursday Probably like a time. video or just something in general. I thought I had to stream something on Thursday, but I don't know anymore. I feel like I, I feel like I am missing an obligation. Anyway, I've been trying to play through Ocarina of Time. Uh, the first playthrough is on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Clips. It's a good time. Uh, I will continue to play through it here on this Twitch channel. I have never beaten Ocarina of Time before in my whole life. Uh, I've played a little bit of it, but I've never beaten it. Uh, so, uh, come make fun of me. And I'll see you guys later. Everybody say hello to Miss Click. I'm going to raid her right now. She just started her stream, I think. So, uh, go over there now. Uh, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.